have a guest with me tonight, Miss Dorsey Phillips, who's a part of our church and has become a real active member of the church. We're getting a chance to visit with her in her home. I want you to hear some about her story and be encouraged by what the Lord has done through, your, through her life. Thank you for having us. And uh, I've got a few questions. I just want to kind of talk through what's happened through your life. So let's start off at the beginning. Okay. What was your life like early on as a child, attending church? What was your church experience like? I was born into a loving family, but we didn't go to church. I was uh, almost 16 before I started going to church. You were 16 before you went to church? Yes. Okay. Uh, we moved into, my dad was a farmer, and mm -hmm. we moved quite a bit. He was a tenant farmer, and we moved quite a bit. And uh, so the neighbor invited us, my sister and I, to go to church with her. And so we started going to church, and I love that. But growing up, um, when I was in school, you were allowed then to talk about God, you know. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher had a chart on the board, and every Monday she would ask, who went to Sunday school yesterday? <laughs> and I never did barked on that chart, and I really felt bad about that. I even felt before I knew Jesus as my Savior, I felt God talking to me. You felt the presence I, of the Lord I even before you knew him. Went before I knew him. And so we started going to that church and I enjoyed being with the young people and, the, and just the atmosphere of it. And there was a revival that came and uh, my family started going to that revival. And one night, um, the pastor of the evangelist was Chester Swore, who was a great um, evangelist working with youth. And I just felt like I was the only one in that, I was sitting in the youth choir and I felt I was the only one in that church. He was just talking to me. So I went down and accepted Jesus as my Savior. Mm -hmm. And um, I was sitting there bowed and I felt other people coming. And I looked up and my whole family was there. My mother, my father, my brother, and my sister. And um, it not only changed my life, but it changed our family's life. My dad would gather us around every night for devotions. No matter if we went to a ball game or whatever, we had to get back in in time to have devotions before we went to bed. And we had uh, um, prayers at our meals. and It just changed my life completely. So your whole family got saved on the same night? Well, Dad had been, he was a backslider. Okay. <laughs> okay. He knew better. He knew better. Okay. He was a good man, but he just went to church. Yes. You know? Now, what, what area did you grow up in? Was he here in Kentucky? It was in Shelby County. Shelby County, okay. We were in the country on a farm, yes. Um, and it was a nice farmland, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Kids in the city miss a lot. They, they do. You learn a lot out there on the farm. Yes. So, so your salvation experience really ties into the fact that even though you didn't grow up in church, you knew something was there. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that school at that time, it might be a little uncomfortable now to try to do that in school, but even at school you got encouragement mm -hmm. to go to church. So that's wonderful. And, so um, That night when I was saved, I went home and bowed by my bed. And I thanked Jesus for saving me, coming into my heart. And I promised God that night that I would give my whole life to him, whatever he wanted me to do, wherever he wanted me to go. And I've been living with that my whole life. Well, that, that's a pretty big prayer for a teenager. Yeah. It is. And he took you up on that, didn't he? He did. <laughs> he kind well, of when you make it out to the Lord, you have to keep it. <laughs> he kind of expects that from all of us. Sometimes we're better at it than others. So, well, let's talk a little bit about that then. You, you end up meeting a guy named Marshall. I did. Uh -huh. All right. Tell us about that. Um, Marshall was not in church either at the time. And uh, we went to his little my family had moved in another community where Marshall lived. Uh, it was First French Baptist Church. It was <laughs> the church I grew up in, I was married in and left from. And um, when we were youth, the youth group, we went out once a week witnessing, knocking on doors and oh. visiting people. And we just grew up. He, he became the um, director of um, training union, which is no longer. And he just worked in the church. And he was trying to get away from the call to be a minister. Mm -hmm. And finally he just came into it. But he was not interested in uh, missions at that time. And I did not pressure him into that. We just, we got married and um, had two children. We were in, he was in the seminary. He was pastoring during that time at Shelbyville. 
And um, he was going to seminary at the same yeah, time. He was going to seminary. I wasn't going to seminary then. Okay. And uh, after we felt the call, he, he, he after I felt the call, I shared it with him, and and then we I started the seminary. And it took us three years to get to the mission field mm -hmm. because. Uh, they like for you to have experience before you go. Yes. So we pastored six years before we went to the mission field. You learn a lot doing that, don't you? You yes. learn a lot from the pastoring side yes. of things <clears throat> and the seminary side of things. Yes. Place. You learn how to work with people. Mm -hmm. You learn patience. You do. You do. Uh -huh. And how to get along with people. And, and I did a lot of associational work with um, GAs and ACT teams mm -hmm. and things like that, mm -hmm. you know. So you guys go to Africa, go to Kenya, and you've got two little girls. Yes. And those two little girls go to church with you now, Sandy and Pam. Mm -hmm. So they, how were they when you were first went? <clears throat> we were, uh, they were seven and ten. Seven and ten. Mm -hmm. And then you had <clears throat> another child born yes. in Kenya. I was born in uh, Your son? Yes. Okay. I was born in Nairobi. And, uh, how long did you stay in Kenya? When did y'all when did y'all move back to the states? Well, we were we were pointed to the East African. East Africa. And okay. It was Africa. It was Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. So we served in Tanzania and Kenya. Okay. I went to language school in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and then we went to a, a mission in Kenya, and then the last I taught in a seminary in Arusha. <laughs> y'all got around while you were there, didn't you? <laughs> then y'all came back to the states. Yes. Okay. What happened then? What? How did ministry continue? What What took place then when you moved back to the United States? Um, we started pastoring again. Okay. We pastored six years, and then we <clears throat> felt the call. Well, we didn't feel the call. We were asked to go to see the Lord. To the Baptist camp. The Baptist camp. camp. Uh, okay. The Baptist camp. So uh, we went to the Cedar Moore and spent 10 years there. Now, y'all actually lived there at the camp. Yes. And Marsha was the director. Yes. And, and you supported him and all the other things. I worked things. in the office. Okay. I, worked, I took care of the GA camp. Okay. Uh, so you worked 10 years there and then you yes. left there. It's, if, you, if anybody's been to Cedar Moore, it's a beautiful place. To live. I haven't been there, but a lot of our youth have gone there and, and gone to camp there, and they, they just say it's a beautiful place. But it's uh, not a five to nine. Five, <laughs> it's not a five star hotel. Yeah, huh? It's not a nine to five job. Okay, yes. You're uh, really busy all the time. Many times we'd be waking at two or three o'clock in the morning, someone would play all day and then get sick at night, so we'd have to take them to the emergency room. Especially hectic during the summers because. Uh, the camps went on our A and G A and U's, and um, they went on from Monday through Friday. And after they left on um, Friday, the U's, everybody had to jump in and clean rooms, make beds, and all because we had a mm -hmm. adult group coming in mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. weekend to uh, Friday through Sunday, and then it was Monday again, time to start all over. Mm -hmm. But we were there 10 years, and I just wonder how many lives were changed yes. during that time. Yes. Um, some wonderful things happened. And you never know how you're going to influence people. No. Um, one day, Marshall had a pastor to call him, and he said, uh, Brother Phillips, I'm fixing to go to another church, and I want to tell you how you influenced my life. And Marshall didn't know him or anything, so he came, and this was the story. One night, the GA worker called, and she said, Brother Phillips, some of the girls have seen some boys peeping in the windows. <laughs> so <laughs> Marshall went and called the farm manager. They went over, looked around, didn't see anything. The next morning, early the next morning, the worker came in, and she said, Brother Phillips, there's a car over there in the field, and two boys asleep on the ground. <laughs> so he went over, and he called Jack Lewis, who was a deputy, and they went and woke him up. Well, naturally, they didn't do it. But Jack took him in and he called the mothers and they were very upset, very offended. Their sons would not do that. And so he said, well, your boys are going to be uh, charged if you don't come to Shelbyville. So they went to Shelbyville and the boys told them, no, that they were not uh, in, they had not done this. And Marcy let them talk a while and he said, boys, you've got one or two options. 
you can come clean, tell your mother the truth, or you're going to be charged with trespassing. And so they told their mother too. He said, you remember that short blonde boy? He said, that was me. He said, you scared the hell out of me. I went home surrender to preach. <laughs> we all get called in different ways. And I know many a boy that needs that scared out of them. So that's, <laughs> well, that's so good. I was a camp director for two weeks and lost 17 pounds. I'll see how y'all survive for 10 it was years. A, it, was, it was really hard. It, it's hard work. It's, I, I think that's probably a hard problem. I, it could be. I told him I was like a mom for two weeks about killing. Yeah. So that's yeah. tough. So you leave Southern Moore, you come back to Shelbyville. Is that where y'all came back to? We um, came to a church outside of Shelbyville. Outside of Shelbyville. We pastored there for six years. Okay. Well, then you kind of thought that's where you were going to end up. You were going to end up in Shelbyville. That's where you guys were going to live. But how is it that you moved to Horse Cave? Um, well, my daughter used to live here. Mm hmm and I would visit her, and I'd say, I'd never live in Horse Cave. Never come to Horse Cave. <laughs> because okay. I was from Shelbyville, from the Bluegrass area, and, and um, my husband died, and I, then my only sister died, and I just prayed to God, and, and I thought it's time to go. And um, so I came here, and I found through the years that the best place to be is in God's will. Yes, yes. So, and I've enjoyed it so much. Uh, and each Sunday morning, you're sitting by those two little girls again yes, and being yes, in the church. Yes. So, uh, the, the roles kind of change now. They think I'm the mom. I mean, they're the mom and I'm the child. They try to tell me what to do. Well, we'll let them think that, but we know the truth, okay? <laughs> all right. One more thing I want to ask you about. Thank you for taking the time to share all that. But you're not done. You're not done. You have joined in with the group that is taking the gospel from door to door. Why would you want to do that? Why at this stage of your life do you feel like that you still want to go out and go door to door uh, telling people about the love of God for them? Well, go back a little bit when Marshall died. I just felt lost because I felt um, I had been so active all my life and I just asked God, God, why would you take him and leave me here? What am I going to do now? I don't know what to do. And um, I just felt like this is my period in my life where I'm going through the being years. I pray more, read my Bible more. And um, so God has just led me to different things. And so when you mentioned that, I thought, well, I've been to Africa to tell people about Jesus, and I'm surrounded by people who don't know him today. That's, that, that is very well said. Yeah. That uh, someone who's lost in Horse Cave is just as lost as someone that's in Kenya. Yes, it is. So you want to be used to the Lord as long as you're here. I do, yes. Well, that's a great encouragement and a great example for all of us. And I'm grateful. I hate it for what you had to go through to get here, but I'm grateful that the Lord has placed you here and can be an encouragement to us as we see you continuing with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of that uh, teenage girl who bowed by her bed. Lord, I'll go anywhere that you send me. I don't stress about the past. I had a wonderful past. The weird. It lasted almost 68 years, and I don't really worry about the future. I know God's got control. I just try to enjoy your day. I have. That's not a bad way to live. Not a bad way at all. Thank you for letting us in your home, and thank you for giving us the chance to interview you and be an encouragement to all those that have watched. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I'm grateful for Miss Dorsey and grateful for all that you've led her through. And I ask, Lord, as you continue to lead her, that she will be used by you to bring one more, two more, five more people to faith in Jesus. Thank you for loving us and giving us this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.